Based on our life experiences, we have learned to interpret numbers in a certain way. In this section, we are going to explore the idea a little more deeply with the goal of proving an important theorem about how we represent numbers. We write numbers using a place value system. What this means is that individual digits have meaning based on both the symbol and the location of the digit within the number itself. More specifically, we use a base 10 place value system, which means that the values of the numbers are built around powers of 10. Instead of writing out the number in standard form, we're going to use the expanded form of the number in order to emphasize the base 10 place value system. Although writing down the exponents on all the terms helps us to emphasize the point about the powers of 10, we generally don't write those out. In general, the expanded form of a number looks like this. Instead of working with base 10, we can also work with base 2, which is known as binary notation. The change is that instead of building numbers around powers of 10, we will build numbers around powers of 2. A consequence of this is that instead of using the digits 0 through 9, we will only use the digits 0 and 1. In order to distinguish our binary numbers from the standard base 10 numbers, we will write binary numbers with a subscript 2 at the end. The theorem we are going to prove shows that every integer has exactly one representation in any given base. We can always insist that the leading term is non-zero by just starting in a different place. However, it's possible that the trailing terms are zero. In order to help the notation in our proof, we will assume that we've dropped the terms that are zero at the end of the representation, so that the representation we use starts and ends with non-zero terms. Let b sub k of n denote the number of representations of n base k. If we prove that this value is 1 for all n, then we would have proven the full theorem. To start, let's consider representation of n as we've just described. We will subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. Notice that since the last coefficient is non-zero, we can pull out one of them and rewrite the equation like this. We can now use the formula for the sum of a finite geometric series with x equal to k on these terms to get this. This calculation shows that every representation of n leads to a representation of n minus 1, so that there are at least as many representations of n minus 1 as there are representations of n. In other words, b sub k of n is less than or equal to b sub k of n minus 1. By noting that the calculation works for any positive integer n, we can apply this repeatedly to get a whole string of inequalities. Also, b sub k of 1 equals 1, since any other representation will be greater than 1. We can use this to show that there is at most one representation of n for any n. However, we need to show that there is at least one representation to complete the proof. In order to do that, we will use the result from a previous section. For our application, we will have k to the n is greater than n. Since k to the n is a valid base k representation, we have the following string of inequalities. Notice that this shows that b sub k of n equals 1, which completes the proof. Converting numbers into base k is a matter of trying to divide by the highest powers of k possible and looking at the quotients and remainders. Rather than do this abstractly, we will work with a specific example. Example, convert 383 to base 4. We will start off by first listing the powers of 4. Notice that the largest one of these that divides 383 at least once is 256. So we will divide 383 by 256 and write out the quotient and remainder. Next, we will divide the remainder by the next smaller power of 4 to get a new quotient and a new remainder. We continue repeating this process until we have no more remainders. The quotients give us the digits in the expansion by placing each digit into the position corresponding to the place values, and that gives us the desired representation. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.